Good morning everybody, Pastor Steve here at Shepherd of the Hills. This is our dedication plaque for our new building. And I really wanted to point out to you, in addition to the Bible verse from Ephesians chapter 3, it says right here, dedicated May 31st, 2020. Now, it's already on the plaque, so I guess we have to have a dedication on May 31st, 2020. The only question still up in the air is if any of you will be able to be here for it. Because the way it looks right now, we're still not going to be open for business. Not fully, at least not by the end of this month. I had any number of conversations, and maybe you've had them too, with what are churches supposed to do with this when the government is issuing orders and restrictions and guidelines that prohibit the people of God from gathering together in worship. Shouldn't we be trusting God to take care of us regardless of what the government says? Well, there's a lot of spiritual factors going into that whole conversation. And quite honestly, it's not as simple as, well, if you trust God, you will gather together and risk the virus because he will provide for you. I don't know that you can say that, that it's a sign of faith and trust by disobeying the government's orders or the recommendations of, of the healthcare experts to just to prove how, how strong your trust is. I, I don't see it that way, and I don't know that God sees it that way. Now. We know that we, we trust in the Lord in everything, and especially in the times of challenge, in times of struggle, when we are facing these kinds of, of threats, of obstacles. Certainly, we trust in the Lord. We depend on Him to see us through, to provide for us, to take care of us, as well we should. But now we've got a very unique time in which the government is recommending that we not worship, that we not gather together because that's how the virus spreads. There are plenty of us who, who doubt just how severe this virus is because the mortality rate is relatively low and the amount of fatalities from this particular strain of virus isn't nearly the millions of people that or were originally feared. That, that's all political stuff and that's medical stuff. I'm going to stay with the spiritual stuff. When this all started and the, the orders were coming out in March, I was of that mindset that we are going to trust in the Lord and He's going to take care of us and I don't care what the government's going to say. I had in mind a little bit of Daniel when, when Xerxes gave, or Darius gave his, his edict that you can only pray to me, to Darius, not to anyone else or any other god. And Daniel, what did he do? The government issued an edict and Daniel went to his room and he prayed three times a day like he'd always done before. I was thinking it was time to be Daniel. But then, in course of thinking about this, praying about it and searching God's word about it, the Holy Spirit kind of pointed me in a little different direction. Because you see, the government is not telling us you're not allowed to pray. And if the government did try and tell us that, I would refuse. It's, a, it's like in the, in the book of Acts, when the apostles were commanded not to preach in the name of Jesus. And they proclaimed, we must obey God rather than men. The government's not telling us that we cannot preach, that we cannot proclaim, that we cannot use video ministry to share the word of God and proclaim his grace and extend his kingdom. We can do all of those things. The, the recommendation, the restriction is gathering in groups. Well, shouldn't we trust Jesus anyway when we gather in groups? We've been, <laughs> we've been swapping germs for over 50 years here at Shepherd of the Hills. Every time you've gone to a Packer game, you've been swapping germs with people. Every time you go to the mall or the store, you and I, we, we've been trading germs back and forth. Every human interaction is the exchange of germs flying through the air. 
but that again, that that's going in directions we don't we don't have to concern ourselves with. What about the spiritual element that comes into play? Rather than being a Daniel, I arrived at Matthew chapter four, and in Matthew chapter four we have the temptation of Jesus, and the devil is giving Jesus every opportunity to do something other than what God had given to do, what God had instructed him to do. And at one point, the devil takes Jesus to the holy city, had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift up in, you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. See, even the devil knows how to quote the Bible. He's quoting Psalm 91. He's actually misquoting Psalm 91. But there it is. Just throw yourself down and God will catch you. God will protect you. Does it sound familiar? Jesus answers in verse 7. It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And Jesus is responding with Deuteronomy chapter 6. You see, the people of God had done this kind of thing before where we are going to show off our faith, our trust. And they put God to the test and God saw that as a sin because they really weren't demonstrating anything to God that he didn't already know. They were trying to show off the strength of their spirituality in contrast to other people by testing God. Now, in Jesus' case, I think the words are very clear. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Do not start gathering together without masks and gloves and just pretend that the virus isn't there or you're not going to get infected and just go back to doing what you do because the government is, the government is not Christian. The government is not on the side of the gospel. We know that but we don't have anything to prove. And we don't have to put God to the test. And we also have to keep in mind, I as a pastor have to keep in mind, I can't make these decisions just based on myself. See, me and my family, we're all fine and healthy. We're not at risk. We don't have compromised immune systems. And I'm not of an age yet that puts me in the, in the high-risk category. So I'm just fine going about my business and coming to church and seeing people here. I've got 1,500 other souls that I, as a pastor, have to care for. And a lot of them are not in the same position as I am medically. And a lot of them aren't in the same position as I am spiritually. Some are much stronger than me, actually. Some, maybe not so much. But I'm not going to put God to the test. And in all of this, hasn't God shown us a lot of things we otherwise might not have seen? How about this? Doing daily video devotions on Facebook to stay in the Word and prayer together when physically we cannot be together. Or online worship. Or drive-in worship, like we're going to have this coming Sunday on Mother's Day. Or drive-through communion, like we're going to have on the 17th. These are all things that have, have brought people out and brought people up in ways that otherwise we may never have experienced. Yes, I really want for all of us to come back and and be together and it's it's not going to happen on May 31st for one thing the whole building won't really be done yet I don't know if you can hear the trucks outside they're working on the parking lot today but the altar and the pulpit the baptismal font the stained glass window those aren't going to be ready until the middle of June because the company that does those things they are not essential so they got shut down for a while so that's prolonging some of the finishing touches all right from what I've read, though, from other states around the Midwest, it looks like, if everything holds, it looks like the weekend of the 4th of July is when everything will be opened back up. Okay, we'll be ready for it. 
between now and then, we're not going to put the Lord to the test. The Lord is putting us to the test. Jesus says to trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, not preparing a place for you. Jesus is preparing a place for us. On this side of eternity and the one on the other side. In between. We will continue to turn to him and trust in him. And we will continue to love one another the way he has loved us. Even if it's through a camera for a little while longer. So with that in mind, would you pray with me please? Lord Jesus, help us to know that we don't have anything to prove and neither do you. May we continue to love one another, to look to the interests of others before our own. May we follow what your word has to say because quite honestly, Jesus, it's pretty easy to pick out a, a passage here or a passage there to back up what we want it to say. In this instance, in this situation, in this environment with this coronavirus, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would guide us and lead us and love us and forgive us as you have done always and will continue to do forever. And Lord Jesus, if you can do it at all, can you get these guys to hurry up and finish the building? We would really love that. In your good time, Lord Jesus, in keeping with your will and in your holy name. Amen. God's blessings, everybody.